presentation of TFNN. Sylvester Stallone knew his whole life what he wanted to do. For him, it was a chance to inspire others. Life wasn't easy. At birth, he was pulled out by forceps. It's why he looks and speaks the way he does. 1,500 agents said, no, you're not an actor. His first three scenes led to nothing, but he never gave up. Sly sold his first script, Paradise Alley, for $100. That money didn't last long. The last thing he had left was his dog. He got $25. That was rock bottom. He cried, and soon after, watched a fight between Muhammad Ali and Chuck Webner. Webner went 15 rounds but was pounded to a pulp. It inspired Sly, and he wrote for 20 hours straight the entire Rocky movie. Tried to sell it, but nobody wanted it. Too predictable, too sappy. Sly saved those comments and read them to himself the night he won the Oscar. Sly never gave up. One day, two guys offered to buy the script for $125,000. Sly said with one condition, I'm Rocky. No way. We need a star like Ryan O'Neal to play Rocky. Can you imagine? The same guys called him back and offered him a quarter million dollars not to star in his own movie. Sly said no. They countered with $325,000. Sly said no. They compromised. 35 grand, points in the movie, and Sly would play Rocky. Rocky has grossed over $225 million and the entire franchise over $1 billion. What's your Rocky moment, folks? What's your vision? Your unstoppable success? You were born to be a money master. The time is now to take massive action. Let's go over to Don in Odessa, Florida. Don, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Hey, Steve. Thank you. You bet. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. I'm a subscriber to your service, and I just want to let you know that I sure do appreciate what you've done for me. Wow. Thank you very, very much. The Trader's Edge with your host, Steve Rhodes. Good morning from TFNN. Welcome to the May 13th. Terrific Tuesday edition of today's opening bell. On the Trader's Edge, I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, the daily newsletter service that is the intelligence for creating financial freedom. Hope everyone out there had a, a marvelous Monday. Let's begin our terrific uh, Tuesday. You know what that is. That means we want to make sure that we have clear outcomes. And my outcome each and every day, well, it's to teach you how to master the tools for trading. That includes the tools of the mind, because when we master the tools of the mind, folks, we become a strategist. So this morning, we're going to take a look at swing points. We're going to take a look at A to B equals CD. We might even try to throw in a three drive to a top pattern. We'll throw in all the different technical patterns that we can, and those are all tactics. And tactics without strategy, you know how it goes. It's a recipe for failure, and failure is not an option in my playbook. I hope it's not in yours as well. So no matter what it is you're trying to master in life, I want you to think like a strategist because strategist will slay the tactician all day long. So let's go look at one of our tools to help us think like a strategist, the tool I call the pillars of success. You see, the things successful people find easy to do, unsuccessful people find to be easy not to do. Think about that. Successful people find it easy to set goals that could change their life. Unsuccessful people find it what? Easy not to. Successful people find it easy to read books that could affect their thinking, their ideas, whether they're newsletters, books, whatever it might be. Unsuccessful people find it easy not to do so. Successful people find it easy to attend classes, seminars, and to get around, you know, other successful people. Unsuccessful people, they say this. They say it probably wouldn't really matter. So to sum it up, I would say successful people do the things that unsuccessful people don't. And those unsuccessful people, they find it easy not to do out there. You know, Ralph Waldo Emerson, he once said this. He said, all successful men and women have agreed in one thing. They were causationists. They believed that things were not by luck, but by the law that there was not a weak or cracked link in the chain that joins the first 
and the last of things. Brian Adams in How to Succeed, he wrote, The energy that makes organizations move depends on individual enthusiasm. Leaders with bright ideas and the ability to inspire high thought and actions in others, they are the main generators of energy. Their individual brand of enthusiasm, it rubs off on the other people and inspires them to greater works. And finally, Alden Palmer. He is quoted as saying this, We are not put here on this earth to fool around. There's work to be done. There are responsibilities to be met. Humanity needs the abilities of every man and woman. Couldn't be more aptly uh, said out there. It is Terrific Tuesday. This is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Let's get things kicked off out here right now. We've got Dow futures trading up 18 points. They're trading out at 16,673. S&P futures up about two. Trade at 1894.50. NASDAQ futures up over five points. Trading out at 36.13. King dollar up 11 pennies out here. So we got some movement in the uh, currency market. It's trading out at $80.07. Hard currencies relatively flat. Uh, gold's trading out at 1296.60. That's up 80 cents. Uh, silver is totally flat. Trading out at 1954. Light sweet crude is not flat. It's up uh, about seven tenths of a percent. Trading out at 10130, up 70 cents right now. A quick peek around the globe. Let's see what we have out here. Boy, we handed the ball off to Asia last night, didn't we? Yeah, the Nikkei. Well, it was up 276 points, nearly two percent. A little bit like the, uh, a little bit like the. Uh, Russell 2000 went up uh, 2 and 2 tenths percent yesterday. Hang Seng up 4 tenths percent. It was up 90 points. The Shanghai basically unchanged down 2. Over in Europe right now, the DAX is up 67.7 tenths percent. FTSE, not really a ton of movement out here. It is up $8. Our call in number is 877-927-6648. Give me a call, folks. Happy to field your question. So where do we begin? Let's take a look at, uh, where do we begin? Let's take a look at... Uh, Let's take a look at the NASDAQ futures out here. The NASDAQ futures and the Russell 2000, they're going to be the little engines that uh, could if this rally is going to continue. So what is it that we know about yesterday's action inside the NASDAQ? Number one, we had a wide-ranging bar. If you take a look at yesterday's bar out here, all right, there's a nice wide-ranging bar. Um, wide-ranging bars... Markets typically do not end on wide-ranging bars. Of course, somebody out there looking at my uh, charts, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, you might say, hey, Steve, not so fast out there. What happened back here on the trading session of April 9th? That was a nice wide-ranging bar, only to be met by what? A wider-ranging bar to the uh, downside out here. So that, in essence, you could take a look at that. And I'd have to say, hey, you're right. Thanks for pointing that out. Why would we say thanks for pointing that out? Because that wide-ranging bar out here actually became what? became not just a, a bearish engulfing candle, but it also became an area of what? Of resistance. So what I've done here on my screen, I've taken the high of that bar. That is at 3599.50. We can see that the uh, first time up here, which was uh, back on the trading session of April 24th, by the way, volume on that trading session, 249,000 contracts. That's the swing point. And the uh, swing point high is 3618.25. Yesterday's close was 36.12. Never got up to uh, got up to thirty six thirteen, but what price was doing was coming into that swing point with what, with volume. The volume out here yesterday three hundred nineteen thousand contracts versus two hundred forty nine thousand contracts. Yes, we are still not trading above that high thirty six eighteen twenty five. That is going to be a key level. In essence, what the market has made is a hundred percent move of move. The question is now is old resistance because you see that acted as resistance. Back on April 24th, it acted as resistance on May Day, on May 1st. It acted as resistance back on May the 2nd. It acted as resistance on May the 6th as there was another attempt to move higher out here. But yesterday, it failed to act as resistance. Hmm, something to think about. So key today, really there's two key levels. You've got horizontal and diagonal areas of what should now become support. The first level is going to be that horizontal line. It is going to be the top of that April 10th candle. Thank you for pointing that out to me. That's the level of 35.9950. 35, that's only about 14 points to the downside. If the market pulls back, which I suspect it's going to do here to work off an overbought condition, the real key question as we come back to the charts later on this evening is going to be, did price come back, test 35.9950, and close back above that level. Now, does it have to pull back? Can the markets continue to motor on higher, even though they're overbought? The answer to that question is absolutely yes. But typically, they don't. 
Last night we saw a market move sideways, try to work off an overbought uh, condition. Uh, all it did by moving sideways, it didn't have enough rest out there. So we'll see. Now, the second area of uh, support out here is going to be what? It's going to be that descending price channel that price broke out of yesterday with conviction, not just by the wide-ranging bar, but also with volume out there. So what does that set up for us? Well, it sets up a move to probably the 3694 range inside of the NASDAQ. If we take a look at what does that mean, and well, if we take a look at coming off the swing point high out here, that's going to be the high that was established on March the 7th. We go from that high down to the low out here on April 15th. What we'll see is that what Price also did yesterday, and thanks for asking me to do that, what Price also did yesterday was what? It made the point six one eight retracement with a wide-ranging bar with volume. As I said, typically, markets do not end on wide-ranging bars like that. They can. We just proved that point, or the market just proved that point to us, but oftentimes they don't. And when you come into a point six one eight retracement level with a wide-ranging bar, the message is that it wants to go for higher highs, that it wants to head up to that 36.63 level. That's the point seven eight six area. And that brings into play that brings into play the potential of getting all the way back to the swing point high. The swing point high came in at uh, 37.17, actually on March the 6th out there. So I just grabbed the wrong uh, swing point, but, uh, you know, not by much. And uh, so that's where, because the low of that is uh, 37.06. And 36.94 is a 1 to 1, A to B equals CD to the upside. So we'll see how this thing plays out. But yesterday's action, extremely bullish out here. Remember that wide-ranging bar. Remember these areas of support. We'll see if, in fact, they can't hold. If we go take a look at uh, the market profiles, let's go take a look at that. Let's go see if we can find areas of support and resistance because certainly that's one of the things that we want to be able to do out here. So let's take a look at the NQ. Let's take a look at it on a, a weekly, on a daily and on a uh, intraday uh, time period out here, we're just letting the uh, system go ahead and set up right now. Here we go. So we've got the uh, weekly chart up on our screen. The weekly chart says, and hopefully you're writing these numbers down, 3667 is the uh, next target area on the longer-term basis that should, in fact, act as resistance. Now, if we take a look at this. We, these are the market profiles out here. If we take a look at this, what I want you to notice, I'm going to try to explode this up on my screen. I know it's much easier to see in the den than it is on Tiger TV, but right here during the a week, the, the 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 prior market profile, the one that we're using here today, that began the week of March the 10th. So that lasted from March the 10th all the way through April 14th, nearly a month out there. And you can see that red line that's referred to as that unfair high out here. And now we've got this nice light blue area. The point of control, price is above that level. That would be very bullish today as well for price to stay above the 360185 level. So 366755, the next area of resistance on the weekly chart using the TAS market profiles. 8779276648. We'll be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts 
Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rose, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. It's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. It is always better when we're together, folks, as we wake up on the uh, west shores of uh, Maui out there. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. So, you know, our role, yours and mine, really to take a look at identifying trends out there. You know, we are either trying to buy into a uh, trend or we're buying or we're taking a look at uh, breakouts and consolidations. You know, and, and if we take a look at if you're watching us on Tiger TV now and inside the den, you can see my uh, tools on the screen. One of the tools that I provide newsletter subscribers with each morning, it's more than just this. This is just a little subset. Uh, it is what's going on with the uh, trend out there. Because most of uh, my clients, they, they either take uh, my recommendations. What they're also looking for is the information that is provided inside the newsletter service to assist them with other trades that they are in. And the key here is do you really want to fight the trend out there? And how do you know when a, a trend is changing? And that's why I put together the Rhodes Momentum Indicator System. Occasionally we show the uh, charts, or uh, daily I guess I show the charts on my uh, screen out here. But what I've also done is... I've put together a little market analyzer tool so that when my newsletter service goes out, usually between 7.30 and 8 o'clock in the morning, what we're looking at here right now is we're looking at the uh, index futures contract. So I'm taking a look at the ES Mini, the NASDAQ, the Russell 2000, the Dow, and I'm looking at it on multiple time frames. In fact, I have six different time frames up here, and that is to assist and that is to help traders on the different types of trading styles that they are utilizing out here. Now, the larger trend, that's the more important trend. So in this case here, we're taking a look at a monthly chart. So inside the inside the Russell, inside the ES, inside the S&P, inside the NASDAQ, inside the uh, uh, Dow out here, strong uptrend, really strong uptrend. That's the light blue color. Maybe you can't read the uh, text if you're watching this on Tiger TV, uh, but it is in a strong bullish mode. On the weekly charts, as we move over, that's a, also the upper one because I'm taking a look at monthly, weekly, and daily. That's the upper section out here. 
The bottom here is take a look at a 120-minute time frame, a 60-minute time frame, and a 30-minute time frame. And what we know here about the index futures, all of them are in full bullish mode on the monthly, on the daily, on the weekly, with the exception of what? With the exception of what was the strongest bounce yesterday, which was inside the Russell 2000. It is trying to turn. It is trying to turn that around. We'll see what takes place over the next couple of days. You know, is the Russell going to lead things down or is the Russell going to start to lead things up? If we take a look at the 120-minute time frame right now, no signal out here on the 120-minute chart. Obviously, turns are going to take place when? Changes in trend are going to take place on shorter-term time frames first, 30 minutes. And the only thing in a 30-minute uh, uh, bearish-type pattern right now, it's really in a retracement mode, happens to be the Russell 2000. As we kicked off the show here this morning, I said, hey, look, on the intraday time period charts, things are overbought. And that overbought condition needs to be worked off. However, however it's all now in this Russell here, just so you, we take a look at the Russell 2000 right now, I've got a 10-minute delay in it. I just don't, don't feel like paying the extra feed for that uh, 10 minutes out there for the Russell. And so if we take a look, because my preference is to trade the ES Mini out here. Now, as we take a look at, uh, at, the, uh, uh, at, at the charts out here, things will begin to turn in the 30, but that should be our expectation. Our expectation should be, if we go ahead and put up a 120-minute chart, just as an example. In fact, we'll put up the 30-minute first. Let's put up the 30-minute first out here. Let me pull this over here just so I can make a couple of points. On a 30-minute time frame, you can see yesterday here we had price spend most of the day in what? Inside the overbought uh, condition out here. So things can stay in overbought condition, but they tend to then eventually work themselves off. In this case here, the most bullish thing that took place yesterday is we really saw that condition on a shorter-term time frame make its way by burning off that overbought condition by doing what? By just simply moving sideways out here. Does that mean that it can't move lower? No, it means that it, it likely, on the 30-minute chart, though, the work is, in essence, almost done as far as working off. It's, 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 it's at the 51, well, it's at the 50-50 level. How about that? And so there's a 50% chance that uh, we're going to see markets pop at the open, and then we see things drop. Now, if we see things drop, is that really a selling opportunity? Well, you know, how do I really know the answer to that? If you're trying to sell the top tick, maybe it is out there. I would have to say, as we take a look at those longer trends, the answer is no, it is not. If we take a look at the 120-minute time frames, let's put that up here on the, that was the ES Mini, by the way, that we were looking at. I'm going to put the ES Mini out here on the 120 minute time frame so let's put that out here on the 120 minute time frame you'll see that 14 period rsi is right now at a 70 level so it is still really inside of the over uh, bought uh, zone that's why i say that it really needs to work its way off if we take a look at uh you know any time period here let me go ahead and put the uh, cursor up here my crosshairs out here we can see back in the time period of about uh, noon or so this is on april the 22nd we saw price stay up here for a bit but then move down the real key is going to be for us is what does this how does this overbought condition work off is it a 0 0.382 retracement, a 0 0.618 retracement? That's really going to be our next clue in these markets here. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full-month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. 
And he publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar, because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. It's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. And we're off to the races. We got the Dow up 29 points, train out at 16,726. S&P up two, train out at 1898. Composite uh, up 50 cents, train out at 4144. Russell 2000 back a point and a half, train out at 1131.92. Apple off a buck, Microsoft up 37 cents. Google up a couple bucks this morning. Lead the charge to the upside. Green Mountain Coffee Roasters GMCR is the uh, ticker symbol. That's up 7% this morning, uh, trading up seven dollars in change. McKesson, MCK, is the uh, ticker symbol. They were out with earnings uh, after the uh, bell, I believe, last night. Uh, revenues in their fourth quarter, $38.1 billion. That was up 25% uh, from $30 billion from a, a year earlier. Up a nice uh, 3% of $5. Rackspace Hostings, R-A-X, is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, they're trading up 12% here this morning. Let me see if I can find their numbers. Net revenue, $421 million, up about 3% here. I don't see the uh, net income, but it uh, looks like their uh, earnings per share about in line with uh, last uh, year out here. Nonetheless, up 12%, up $3.40 out here. Direct TV up 2% this morning. Concho Resources, CXO. Geez, I thought that was down yesterday. Could have been. It's up uh, $2 this morning. Uh, Halo. Hello Zyme Therapeutics, H A L O is a ticker symbol. That's up a nice twenty percent out here. Uh, they did generate revenues of twelve million versus eleven point eight, so not exactly killing it on the uh, top line out here. Nonetheless, it is trading to the upside. We got DXP Enterprise, DXPE this morning, getting the kibosh. This is down 
Looks like, oh, yeah, with volume right off of the uh, bat out here, off 35%. No, off 35 bucks. Well, down 33% out here. They generated revenues of $348 million versus 290 So a nice, uh, nice beat there on the top line. Net income 11.6 versus $13.2 million from the prior year. So they are struggling. There's some uh, troubles out there. Whirlpool down this morning off about uh, $3, down about one and uh, eight tenths percent out here. ExamWorks Group down 3 bucks. EXAM looks like they failed their test out here. They're off $9, down $3 and change right now we've got uh, magic jack c-a-l-l is their ticker symbol they're off 10 percent this morning down a buck 92 generate net income of five million versus oh my goodness 5.3 million versus 9.59 million for the first quarter of the uh, prior year so that is quite a, a nasty look what do they do revenue wise 35 million versus 36.8 so not too bad there looks like they overspent or they've got something out of control out there. Let me see. Percentage wise, we've got uh, Fuel Tech, F T E K is a ticker symbol. It's off uh, 18%, down a buck 16. Now, let's go back and take a look at the uh, S&P futures out here. Now, let's take a look at a couple of different things. So, as I said, we should be expecting a uh, retracement this morning here, a little pullback. How long it's going to last, I can't tell you. We'll just simply have to take a look at patterns out here. When we take a look at the, I'm going to put the 120 minute chart up on my screen. Out here, let me just switch over to that. Give me a moment to put that up on the screen. Now, here we're going to take a look at the under 20 minute. Then we'll go back to the daily, to the weekly, and see where things are at here, out here on the ES Mini. So on the 120 minute chart, we're going to take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern. So in addition to having conditions being an overbought uh, mode out here, Let's go ahead and take a look at our A point. It's going to be the uh, swing point that took place at 10 o'clock in the morning on May the 7th, 2014. That's our A point. Our B point, that took place right out here at the trading session, 10 o'clock in the morning. That's on May the 8th. The uh, C point is going to be the pullback, the retracement that took place on May 9th down at 8 a.m. Uh, those price points, by the way, <coughs> excuse me. The A point is at 3497.50, the B, 3579.75 out there. The C point thirty five ten. What we saw here take place yesterday was a move to what? First, we saw a move to the one to one A to B equals C D. That was hit with what? That was hit with a wide ranging bar eight o'clock in the morning yesterday. Markets don't end on wide ranging bars out there. You never saw a reversal signal or anything. Then what did we see? We saw a move up to what? We saw a move up to the one, the next level on the uh, floor, on the elevator, on the rise up. That's your one to one point two seven two A to B equals CD thirty six fifteen. So we've got the completion of a one to one A to B equals CD. Now on the one hundred twenty minute time frame chart out here, the actual level of Resistance, the unfair high is at 3604.35. So far, we've seen that level tested. We've seen a low so far of 3604.25, really right to the uh, T out there. The real support level is going to be 3584 out here. 35, this is a 120 minute time frame chart that we are looking for. If price is able to pull back in that area, that's where you want to start taking a look at. Does that area act as the first level of support? Is there some kind of reversal that would take place there? And that's what's going on on the 120 minute time frame. Let's take a look at what's going on on the daily time frame for the ES Mini out here. The ES Mini on the daily basis. Uh, and what we're looking at, the A to B equals CD pattern to the upside here. And that means that the B point would need to be taken out, volume or not. 36.18.25 is the key number that you're paying attention to. If, in fact, the ES Mini can get above that, then it is very likely that we'll see a punch up into about the 36.94 area. 36.69, that's the resistance using the uh, TAS signal box. But, of course, we can see a couple different red lines out here. you know. And I'd say that the uh, completion of the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD is the more likely outcome. That's using the daily time frame out here. If we take a look at the uh, weekly time frames out here, the weekly time frames are going to say 3667 on the ES Mini becomes its area of resistance. I think that is the ultimate outcome for the uh, move up here. Now, if we see price get above that, get above the uh, daily and so forth, then what we're going to see is we're going to see a uh, breakout. And is it possible to see a breakout of that area? I'm glad you asked me that question. And the answer is positively, absolutely, most certainly, that is one possible outcome. You say, how can that be, Steve-O? Well, how that can be is by taking a look at what do we have here on the uh, daily chart for the ES Mini. As you know, we've been taking a look at uh, this. Did I have the NQ up? Not the ES, but did. 
Oh, I did have, uh, I don't know, I've got to go back. I'm sorry, I can't replay what I just did. In any event here, as we take a look, I think I had the ES up. And uh, if we take a look at the uh, ES Mini out here right now, what we know, it's been traveling in a 112-point consolidation range. $112 consolidation range, which it broke, came back and tested, moved higher, came back and tested that area, broke again. In fact, it came back and tested what? It tasted the rising price channel out here coming off of the lows back in November of 2012, which has contained price. So we know that we're out here. If we were to try to find any kind of uh, bearish reversal signals out here, well, number one on the ES Mini, if we take a look at the uh, April 4th swing point, that was your key reversal session. That says 1892.50, which the price is above right now. We're only at 1896, but 1892.50 should should become a support level. Now, price moved into that level here yesterday, moved in with uh, volume. Volume-wise, yesterday, accelerating the upside, we had 1.5 1.476 million shares uh, out there. We saw price get above a, a B point of an A to B equals CD. That's the a trading session here from May the 2nd. That only had 938,000 shares. So you've got price motoring Han. You've got maybe a 1.2, maybe a 3 drive to a top pattern out here. Um, you know, this is not how you form 3 drive to a top patterns with wide-ranging bar and accelerated volumes out there. And that's why that is just nothing more than a tactic. That's a pattern. All patterns are are tactics. What you need to have is you've got to have a strategy out there. That's not to say that you can't go try to sell that top tick. If you do that, you know, uh, God bless you. Please, and that's not because you sneezed, but please make sure that you are using stops out there. But the reality is, more times than not, you're not going to have a market that's going to turn off of a bar like yesterday. You want to see some uh, bars moving sideways or something, but uh, you don't want to see that. So, there, you know, if we take a look at uh, bearish, potential bearish patterns that are out here, I'd have to say, yeah. and, and yesterday's uh, three drive to a top, that's coming off of the swing here from April 24th. If we take a look at it, you can't force these patterns. And by forcing these patterns, what I mean is you want to have, what you like to have is both time, and you like to have Fibonacci expansion. Well, if we take a look at that first drive, that was April 24th. The second drive was May 2nd. May 12th out here was the equivalent of the third drive up. So we've got time out there. It's not forced at all, yesterday being May 12th. You've got a nice uh, Fibonacci expansion between the A and the B, the first and the second drive, I should say. You really didn't have a uh, Fibonacci expansion out there. You'd like to see that be a 1.272 expansion, as well as yesterday's, which yesterday's was a 1.272 expansion out here. Nonetheless, I think uh, if you were one to uh, say, hey, and you like to play three drive patterns out here, ones like this with wide-ranging bars, then what you'd have to do is say, if this pattern fails, if price doesn't reverse, then what you have have is a strong like bull marketplace out here. So what does that mean? It says 1957. 1957 is the uh, number out there inside of the uh, ES Mini. I guess I did have the e, the uh, NQ out there. My apology for that. Let me come back and take a look at the ES Mini. So here I was uh, doing one thing and thinking something else. So thank you to Mr. Bill in the uh, den I think that's what I had. Yeah, let's go take a look at the 1 to 1 or 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD pattern. Let me give you the right numbers out here. So thank you. So the 8 point, let's do this again because this is what I started off doing. The 8 point on the 120-minute time frame chart, that's going to be our swing point low from May 7, 2014. That was at 1864. The B point is going to be up here at 10 o'clock in the morning. That is on May 8th. That's out at 1884.75. The uh, C point out here, that's at 10 o'clock in the morning, May 9th. And that C point was priced at uh, 1862.50. Uh, so yesterday inside the S Mini making just slightly more than a one to one A to B equals CD to the upside here. But above all forms of uh, resistance out here inside the 120 minute time frame. Next level on the away up is uh, 1900 that's on the 120 minute time frame let's go take a look at the uh, daily out here daily time frame 1882 uh what is it about 18 let me see if i can push this up here it looks like probably 1880 1890 250 that becomes your uh, and you can see prices above that area that's what's referred to as that unfair high that's resistance a close today above that that sets up the larger a to b equals cd to the upside that being Price taking it to 1923. So if I go back over and say where did that uh, where did that consolidation pattern take us to? That took us to 1957. So now let's go see what's hanging out at 1957. That's probably more than a one to one. A to B equals C D to the upside. 
1944 is your 1 to 1.272. A to B equals CD. Let's go take a look at the uh, weekly chart out here. Weekly chart uh, shows that price is well above any kind of resistance out here. So the ES Mini, all the signals on multiple time frames are what? Are telling you not to be not to be short the market. And if you are short the market, that's fine. Just make sure you are using money management. There is nothing wrong with being stopped out. What's wrong is continuing to just simply add to losses and not have any kind of stop in place whatsoever. Let's take a look at uh, what's going on inside of uh, Goldilocks and uh, Silver. So we've covered what the ES Mini. I, uh, I guess I covered the NQ there intentionally but unintentionally out here. Uh, I guess also we'll just take a look at the uh, Dow real quickly. Uh, so the uh, Dow, we'll just stay in the uh, futures contract out here. The uh, Dow also breaking through a consolidation pattern. It's a 600-point consolidation uh, level out here. And so, you know, if you're going to take a look at what bearish patterns are there inside of the Dow, you actually see this in each of the futures contracts. You've got a potential five-point wave reversal, but you won't get that. You won't get a signal on that until you see what? Until you see some kind of reversal sign. Well, what would that mean today? That would mean price would have to come all the way back into the top of the uh, consolidation, which would be right around the 16508 area, in order to give you some type of reversal signal. And I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying it is likely not to happen out here. Instead, what we're likely to see is a move up to about the 17,100 area inside of the uh, Dow. Uh, that's what the uh, consolidation break is all about. If we take a look at the uh, Russell 2000, let's go take a look. Remember, this is delayed here by uh, 10 minutes. What we did see yesterday was what? We saw a break of the uh, descending price channel out here. So even the weakest of them all inside the marketplace has given us a nice, strong signal. Now let's go take a look at some of these stocks here that are popping and uh, dropping. Let's go do that. Let's go see what we have to the uh, downside out here. Lead the charge. We've got... Uh, DXP Enterprises. DXPE is the uh, ticker symbol. DXPE. Let's go see what this is uh, doing. Down with a massive volume here this morning. Let's go see where this is trading into. Remember, on any stock chart, the key to, uh, you know, when you start with a plain chart just like this, if we didn't have today's in here, you would take a look at this stock chart, right? And what would, where would your eyes immediately gravitate to? You want to immediately go take a look at those high volume bars. Now, when you see a high volume bar, what your preference is, is to see what wide price spread. So we didn't have wide price spread on this July 30th. I'm still never really sure how to totally interpret a bar where you've got wide price spread like that and uh, where you don't have wide price spread, but you have accelerated volume. My interpretation is this. If price is above it, that says, okay, maybe you've got some support there, and so being long is okay. Another area where we can see a wide-ranging bar out here, and I'm just checking the uh, the tops of these bars here, that was on May the 2nd, 2013. Actually, we'll go ahead and put a red line across the uh, bottom out here. And that had volume there of about 700, I'm sorry, yeah, 703,000 shares. So this is DXPE. This is a daily chart that we're looking at. So that's what you would just normally do when you come to a, a brand new chart out here is you would just simply you know, let your eyes gravitate to the high volume bars and just simply draw some horizontal lines there. And the reason that you want to do that is because if a stock ever falls out of bed, that's the first area of logical support because there's not enough you's and me's i feel like my cousin Vinny when i say uh, that because he was saying utes right utes so there's not enough you's and me's out there to make up that kind of volume that has to be done through what through institutions out there and that is if those institutions are still around they may still want to go ahead and support that price in this case here it looks like in the case of dxpe it's probably going to move down and test those uh, lows in that 54 level. It's trading at 76 bucks. Dow's up 33, S&P's up four. We'll be right back, folks. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain 
contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up. Uh, 30 points right now. S&P is up uh, 2. Uh, let's go uh, check in on the uh, ES. Let's take a look at these of the 30-minute time frame. So we started off this morning taking a look at uh, the uh, Rhodes Momentum indicator signals out here. You know, a, uh, a little tool that's included in each morning's newsletter. Now, inside each new morning's newsletter, it shows you exactly what the trends are monthly, weekly, daily, for each of the primary indexes, meaning the Dow, you know, the SOX, the NDX 100, the Russell, all your primary index, the XAU out there. That way you know what the trend is on multiple time frames. It makes it easier for you to a trade. tells you what it is on each of the uh, index ETFs, the diamonds, the spies. It tells you what it is, the trend is on each of the sectors with inside the S&P 500. And then, of course, each of our open positions out there. Then... And that's obviously as of Friday, as of Fridays, as of the evening's close. Then what's included is as of usually about seven o'clock in the morning, sometimes seven thirty. 
Depends when the newsletter service goes out. Then you have what's going on inside each of the uh, currency pairs, the futures contracts for the currency, uh, all the primary ones out there. You know, the Canadian dollar, the Aussie dollar, the euro, the yen, the British pound out there. Uh, You've got uh, what's going on inside the futures contracts, the ES, the NQ, the Russell, the uh, Dow out there. Uh, What's going on inside each of the commodities. And that way, the trend is your friend. And you don't, you know, if you're trading against the trend, which is cool, you're letting you're typically looking for some type of expansion pattern, some type of a butterfly pattern out there, and then you're looking for some type of reversal signal. You're trying to catch something early. You're trying to catch something on an intraday time period out there. And that's why I show what's going on on a daily, weekly, monthly, 120-minute, 60-minute, and 30-minute out there. That way it covers all the information that any trader for any time frame needs. Now, we took a look at the 120-minute time frame. We show that price had moved into what? Into an overbought condition. It has stayed up there on very bullish markets. Uh, things will stay overbought for quite some period of time out there. But typical behavior is that price will begin to work that condition off. Now, it already did begin to do that by moving sideways last night. That's why on the 30-minute chart, which is what we've got up on our screen for the S&P futures, it moved sideways. You can see it just simply went ahead and it uh, moved sideways and it worked that condition off. That's how that works out here. Now, as we speak right now, we've got a a price relative strength divergent pattern that appears to be forming. And that's uh, in this uh, 30-minute session here between 9.30 and 10 o'clock. We don't have a a bearish reversal signal out here. But if we do get one this session, next session, or what have you, you know, that's our indication that on that shorter-term time frame to expect that there's going to be some additional retracement. Why is that? Because really it's the 120-minute chart here that's still in that overbought condition. So I'm putting up the ES Mini on the 120-minute time frame, it has not yet begun to uh, really do anything but move sideways out here. No bearish reversal signal. The candle that it's working on right now, that doesn't uh, complete. Well, it actually completes here at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll see what happens during the next uh, minute or so. Well, actually, we've got three minutes before this uh, session is over out here. But that's the expectation. Right, You've got an overbought condition out here, and the expectation is that markets either move sideways or pull back. And if that's your expectation, would you jump all over it and go short the marketplace out there? And maybe you would. I'm just giving you something else to uh, think about out here. And that is because the daily trends, those are the ones, the weekly trends, those are the ones that are going to have much more significance with regard to what's going on inside of the market. If we go take a look at what's going on inside the VIX index here today, the VIX index is uh, traveling below the uh, 50-day exponential moving average. That says lots of liquidity in the marketplace. It's trading at 1240, 50-day moving average boy that's way up there in the uh, 14 uh, what is it 14 dollars even steven if we take a look at the net declining issues what would be needed today in order for the bears to take back control of the market i believe it's 634 net declining issues right now you've got 131 net advancing issues folks it is terrific tuesday as always thanks so much for sharing your morning with me i look forward to seeing you real soon have a great tuesday folks David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This is TFNN.